Zero accounting software. Balance sheet report overview. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage we set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175%, zoom in. We're gonna open the demo file, but do so by hitting the reset button, which will reset the data and open the demo. We're gonna open two tabs that will put our reports in, the major financial statement reports, the balance sheet, the income statement, right after hiding this item. Right click the tab up top, duplicate. Right click the duplicated tab and duplicate it again. We're gonna go to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down, and open up the balance sheet standard. Tab to the right as that is still thinking, accounting drop down this time, the income statement, profit and loss, P and L. Back to the tab to the left. We're gonna change the date up top and bring that custom date up to 2022 and the end of the period that's still 2021 hold on there we have it and update the report now our focus this time that's what we've been doing every time that's our setup process our major focus now is going to be the balance sheet now this will be more of an accounting kind of presentation here and i think it's useful to do that because noting that the balance sheet and the income statement our are our end result that's what we're trying to build at least from a reporting standpoint and so it's a good idea then to get an idea of what the balance sheet is, you know, what the income statement is, and then we can expand as we enter more data to the other subsidiary reports, which are usually giving more data about one or multiple line items on these major two financial statement reports. So just a quick recap on that. If I go to the first tab over here, I'm gonna to go to the accounting dropdown and scroll down to the chart of accounts. You'll recall that the chart of accounts from a prior presentation is basically the first underlying thing we set up. This is gonna be one of the primary underlying foundational steps that need to happen before we can enter financial transactions. Then we enter the financial transactions and these are gonna trend the bills, the invoice and so on. These things create a journal entry, most of them, to at least two accounts. And those that'll be the double entry accounting system will then be impacting the balance sheet and the income statement are the major two forms. And then all other reports are could or may also be impacted by those financial transactions, but they're really giving more detail about one or multiple line items on these two main reports. Okay, so what is the balance sheet? First note that the balance sheet is as of a point in time. So we're reporting the balance sheet as of a point in time. So if I was to change the beginning date if it wasn't for the year ended, but the month ended, or for the day ended, it wouldn't matter because it's for this point in time. It's kind of like checking your bank account as of now. It doesn't matter if I change the beginning date. I'm checking my bank account as of today and one year prior to that. Well, it doesn't matter if you're checking it as of today, how much is in there as of now, it is what it is. And the income statement on the other hand is the performance report where we actually scroll back to performance so you can think of it more like a movie what happened from a time frame to a time frame you can also think about it in terms of like how many how far can you drive in a day if you were trying to see how far you could drive in a day you reset the odometer and you just drive for a day to see how far you go those are what the income statement accounts are kind of doing and that's why you have a different title up top here saying for the year ended as opposed to the balance sheet which is just a date as of that date so the major components of the balance sheet, then you could break them out into the three categories, which is the accounting equation, assets, liabilities, and uh, the equity. So, and you can see this sometimes if I go to this layout tab down here, you can see these major categories with, uh, with the dropdowns. Actually, I have the dropdowns 
more here so I can collapse some of these is what I was thinking. And so now you've got assets equal liabilities and equity. That's the accounting equation. The assets represent what the company has. If the company has them, they're kind of, you can also think of them as investments because those are the things that the company is using in order to generate future revenue, in order to generate uh, the, the potential, the activity into the future. If we don't need to generate revenue in the future with these assets, if they're not useful to increasing performance, then we could just give them to the owner and the owner can invest them someplace else, right? The reason they're in the business is because they are there in order to help generate revenue in the future. Liabilities, then you could think of it as a third party claim to the assets. So like a bank, a loan, whereas the equity represents the owner's claim to the assets. So and so you can kind of think of the net value of the company. Like if you're looking at your bank account, you look at the bottom line. How much do I have at this point in time? The bottom line is in essence the equity section because it's the assets, what the company has, minus the liabilities, who we owe money to is the net value of the company. Although it's on a book based method as opposed to the fair market value. Because if I was to liquidate the company, we, we may not be able to get the same amount of cash as we're reporting stuff up top. We'll get into that in a bit more detail shortly. But note, also you can think of it as two sides of one coin, right? You've got the assets up top, represent what the company has. On the flip side, you're showing who has claim to those assets, who has claim to the assets, the third party liabilities and equity. So if I look at this from an account from a from the numbers, if I uh, update, I'm just going to cancel this and then say discard changes. So and we'll get into that that formatting later. That's a really neat tool that zero has. But uh, we'll go down here. So it's 11 uh, 97167 matches the 11 97167. And if I pulled out the trusty calculator calculator, and we're going to say a calculation of assets minus liabilities, we could say assets are 11971.67 minus the liabilities of the 22024.53 gives us the equity 10052086. Got a little backwards there. No problem. Okay, so that's the general that's the general idea of it. So let's go through the, the components of it now. Now note that when you enter the chart of accounts, every time we add a new account, you are gonna add them as assets, liabilities, equity type of accounts ex or expense and uh, revenue accounts, as we can see in the chart of accounts up top. And then within those categories, let's just go into the assets here that they got this neat thing in zero where you could go over here to just the asset accounts. And then we have the sub accounts within the asset accounts. Now, we talked about this a little bit when we went over the GL. Note that there's some kind of subcategories on the types of accounts that are there because of reporting purposes, because that's how you normally report financial accounts. And some are there because of the needs of the logistics of the software. So, for example, the checking account and saving account are bank type of accounts. They are not bank type of accounts because because of reporting purposes. They're bank type of accounts because they have a special need within the software of being connected to the bank. But they're still really current asset accounts for reporting purposes. Accounts receivable often has kind of a special need in that it has a sub ledger. But notice it's a current asset type of account, current asset type of account. Inventory is another one, which is basically a current asset type of account, but has a special need within the software of tracking the inventory if you're turning on perpetual inventory system. And then these ones, the fixed assets are actually, uh, they might have some special needs as well, but they are also different from reporting purposes. So let's consider that over here. I'm gonna then, I'm gonna go back to this view so I can do some collapsing edit layout view. And so, and this is a, a really neat tool, this edit layout thing so that we can, uh, we will talk about it more later, but I'm going to collapse everything in here. Okay, so then the types of, of assets, then you've got the current assets, typically fixed assets and long term assets. 
So the current assets represent things that are going to be uh, consumed relatively shortly, like within a year. So they're assets that are going to be used relatively soon. It's important to break those out because you want to be able to compare them to say current liabilities down here. It's current liabilities versus long term. Let's break that out. I'll do that. Okay, and then fixed assets represent things that were in, they're basically investments. That's the stuff that we took our money and put into a long term investment in things like property, plant and equipment. You might hear them called depreciable assets or uh, uh, fixed assets, depreciable assets, property, plants and equipment. So the, it's important to break those out because you have to account for them differently with depreciation schedules. This is an accrual kind of account. And because you wanna be able to compare your current assets to your current liabilities. Because if I have a lot of fixed assets, note my whole goal for a startup is to usually get cash. And I wanna get the cash so I can buy fixed assets like property, plant, and equipment, because the fixed assets are the things that I can use to generate revenue in the future. However, if I put too much money into the fixed assets, like I put, I buy the farm, but all my money's in the farm and I have no cash flow, then I will not be able to pay the upcoming bills without selling the farm, right? And that's not good. So we gotta be able to, to tie both of these things out, even though they're, they're gonna increase our total assets we have to be able to make sure we manage the flow versus our investments. And then we've got the long-term assets, which would be other types of assets that are not current and not fixed assets, the long-term assets, possibly investments, for example, in long-term stocks and bonds or other kind of investments that are long-term. And then down here, we got the liabilities. So liabilities are things like loans to the bank and stuff like that, which we could have a current liability and long-term liability, similar kind of rationale if with the assets up top, the, the current liabilities are gonna be due within a year. The reason that's important is because I wanna make sure I have the cash flow, current assets, in order to pay off the current liabilities within that short term time horizon. And so in one of the, if I can't, and I need to finance the business, one of the options is to try to push out some of my loans to long-term loans so that some more of the portion of the loan is going to be due at further out into the future, although that will cost us in the terms of interest. And then the equity represents our claim to the business. The equity is often the most common or most confusing section in some ways, because I would think about it in terms of you have total equity, which, which represents the owner's claim to the assets. That's a pretty clear, because you want to think about the business being separate, liability claims to the assets versus the owner's claims. Now, if there's just one person, then that's not really too difficult because now you've you got one person on the equity and you're just going to break out an equity account for the owner. You could call it owner's equity. You can call it, you know, uh, capital, owner's capital. And then you might break out the draws that the owner takes out. So when the company generates revenue, cash will go up that excess cash we're gonna pull out instead of buying more fixed assets in order to pay for the personal things on the, the owner's side of things. And then the, the, they might put money in, which might be an owner contribution in order to grow the business or start up the business. Now, if it's a partnership, it gets way more confusing because now you have the equity as total owners still, but you might have multiple partners, two or more partners, where you have to track each one of those individual capital accounts for them because they have differing amounts of a claim to the assets. So now you've got to track which owners have what claim to the assets, which can get confusing because it might not all be even because they might have an uneven share of profits and investment and so on in accordance with the partnership agreement. And then for taxes, it could be even different with their basis for taxes and whatnot. So it gets somewhat confusing to break out between the partners, but that's the partnership. And then the common stock, I mean, the corporation is actually a little bit easier to be breaking out than a partnership in some cases, because the point of the corporation is to say, okay, equity represents the owner's claim. The owner's claim are now just stockholders. And we're going to say who owns what of the company, not by trying to track each individual stockholders on the financial statement, but by issuing shares that represent equal 
ownership in the corporation. So now you can just say, okay, I'm just going to put everything in equity into, in essence, retained earnings would be the earnings that have been retained through the company generally. And then when I give out a, a draw, I'm not going to have to determine which partner I give the draw to. I have to determine how much draws I'm going to give in total per share. And then instead of draws, it would be called dividends. And then the, and then the common stock represents the investment from the owners meaning how much did the owners pay for the initial investment by purchasing the stocks directly from the company as opposed to buying and selling them outside the company, which doesn't have a, an impact, a financial transaction impact for the company itself. Okay, so that's the general uh, layout of the balance sheet. Let's just go through the, open them up a little bit more here and take a look at some individual accounts to a bit more like we did with the equity. So under, under the current assets, You've got the cash and cash equivalents. Uh, so, and then you've got you've got uh, current assets include accounts receivable, inventory, prepayments, total current assets. So, oftentimes, if you're adding accounts uh, to assets, it's usually oftentimes going to be in the current asset category. If it's not a fixed asset, the fixed assets will typically be the com like uh, buildings equipment and so on now the categories for fixed assets like computer equipment you want to be careful with how you're going to be tracking and depreciating are you depreciating these things within the company or within a uh, zero or are you going to use other software like tax software to help you with depreciation oftentimes small businesses will use tax software and their tax preparers to help them calculate the depreciation because the tax depreciation has to be calculated anyways so you might use the tax software as like your sub ledger for depreciation and, and your fixed assets. And if so, you would probably want to group your asset accounts to align with the, with the, with the reports given in the tax software in terms of the grouping like equipment, building and so on. So we'll talk more about that as we enter data into the system. Long term assets, you usually don't have a lot of them, but you might have investments that you don't plan on on dipping into that you put in long term instead of current and then the liabilities uh, most of your liabilities are probably current like accounts payable accruals and and so on uh, payroll liabilities payables and whatnot sales tax liabilities and uh but uh, you might have some long-term liabilities those tend to be usually like loans or bonds for a corporation and then we've gone over the equity so i'm gonna then uh cancel out of this and so we're gonna say uh, cancel that. Let's cancel, discard changes. There we go. Okay, so there's the general idea on the balance sheet. And uh, so, so every time you enter a transaction up top, you kind of want to be thinking what's the impact on the major financial statements, which should include you know one of these balance sheet items, and then the income statement items, which we'll talk about in the future you also want to be thinking about reports in terms of are they reporting stuff as of a point in time or are they more like the income statement reporting stuff uh for a time frame has been a beginning and an end representing performance now we're later we're going to get into uh the formatting of the balance sheet you got some neat tools in zero and some of them are more advanced than other software like a like a quickbooks so you can do some some good stuff with them so we'll check those out in future presentations